Hey viewers, Colton Tackett on Sonic Boom Fan 101 right here on for another video. And today I'm going to be making a video on the 1994 Chevrolet Chevy Trucks S10 pickup cassette. Now, um, this is the only 1994 Chevrolet Audi cassette. You know, the 1994 Chevrolet cassette this is the only one I have. But I'll be getting another from eBay. Yeah, I ordered one last night. It's going to be on a 1994 Chevrolet Camaro. So yeah, it's going to take a little long for me to wait until like January 9th or something. <laughs> and also in the process of making my own bed right now. <laughs> Woo! So anyway, um, we're going to play side one of this 1994 Chevrolet cassette. So um, just to let you know, the background music and the voices, they're about the same. They're like similar from the 1995 tapes. I'll prove it to you. I'm going to play this tape right now in 3, 2, 1... And we'll see what happens. There is no fade in on side one, if you know what I mean. Listen. Hear that? The music didn't even fade in. It just immediately turned on. Here we go. Congratulations on the purchase of your new Chevrolet S10 pickup. This audio presentation provides information on the operation of selected S10 standard equipment and accessories. It also offers some helpful tips for an S10 owner. Part 2 of this program offers tips on the operation of particular options you may have purchased, as well as information and cautions to consider when trailering with your S10. This presentation calls out only a few of the operational features of your new S10. Complete and detailed information can be found in your owner's manual, which you should read and keep in your truck. In order to gain maximum benefit from this audio presentation, we suggest that you listen to it in your new S10. To help you enhance the future performance and economy of your S10, let's go over a few tips to follow during the break-in period. First, we recommend that you limit your speed during the first 500 miles to a maximum of 55 miles per hour, and be sure to vary your speed during this break-in period. This procedure allows many of the engine components to seat correctly for future performance. Second, Avoid full throttle starts and, whenever possible, hard stops, especially during the first 200 miles of driving. Your new S10 pickup is equipped with an anti-lock braking system, or ABS for short. If your truck is equipped with a four-cylinder engine, it uses a rear-wheel anti-lock braking system. Rear-wheel anti-lock braking systems are designed to minimize rear-wheel lockup during braking by automatically modulating brake pressure. During a brake application that would cause the rear wheels to stop rolling, the anti-lock feature is designed to help you maintain control of the vehicle. And during this period of time, the brakes may vibrate or you may hear some clicking noise. That's the anti-lock braking system doing its job. When a brake application is not hard enough to cause the rear wheels to stop rolling, the brake system acts in a conventional manner. S10s outfitted with a V6 engine utilize a four-wheel anti-lock braking system. This system minimizes lockup at all four wheels by automatically modulating brake pressure. So don't be alarmed if you feel a pulsing of the brake pedal during a brake application that would cause the wheels to stop rolling. This is the ABS system working to help you maintain control of your S10. And keep in mind, if your S10 has four wheel drive, the rear wheel anti-lock feature is only operational in the two wheel drive mode. Now let's take a look at your instrument cluster as there are several warning and indicator lights which you should always monitor. When you turn the ignition switch to the start position, all your warning and indicator lights will briefly illuminate. This is simply a bulb and system check. After a few seconds, all of the lights should go out. If a light remains illuminated, it could mean a system malfunction. Your anti-lock and conventional brake systems have two lights that represent their operating status, an ABS light and a brake warning light. The ABS light may remain on for up to four or five seconds when you start your vehicle. This is normal. If this light remains illuminated or comes on again while driving, the anti-lock feature of the braking system may not be working correctly. The ABS light only applies to the anti-lock feature of your brake system. If this light is illuminated, you still have conventional brakes. It is only the anti-lock feature which may not be operational. If this is the case, see your Chevrolet dealer for a system check. If the brake warning light remains illuminated or comes on while driving, it could indicate a possible malfunction of the conventional braking system. If this occurs
occurs, carefully pull off the road at the first safe opportunity, and use caution since it may take longer to stop. The brake light also illuminates if the parking brake is not fully released. If the brake light is illuminated, check to see that your parking brake is fully released. If the light remains illuminated, see your Chevrolet service department as soon as possible. The service engine soon light reflects the condition of your S10's computer command control system. If this light comes on intermittently or continuously while driving, your truck's engine computer has detected a fault in the components or wiring of the computer command control system. If this happens, your truck can be driven in most cases. However, you should visit an authorized Chevrolet service department as soon as possible to have the computer command control system checked out. You should pay particular attention to the oil pressure, voltmeter, and coolant temperature gauges. Operating your S10 with any of these gauges reading excessively high or low could damage your engine or engine components. The trip odometer records your mileage for either record keeping or monitoring fuel economy. To reset the trip odometer, press the button in the speedometer face. Now we would like to offer some fuel recommendations and starting tips. The fuel gauge reflects the approximate level of fuel in your S10's fuel tank. If you have the enhanced 4.3 liter engine, it has been designed to achieve maximum power by taking full advantage of the higher octane of premium unleaded fuel. However, you can also use regular unleaded fuel for normal performance. Premium unleaded fuel will offer maximum power under conditions where high performance is required, like trailer towing or moving heavy payloads. When you don't have these special needs, regular unleaded fuel will work fine. And regular unleaded fuel also works well for the standard 4.3 liter engine. The octane rating for the fuel you use should be at least 87. And if you use a methanol or ethanol fuel blend, be sure to see the owner's manual for proper mixture recommendations. To start your engine, rotate the ignition key to the start position, but don't depress the gas pedal. If you do, you can flood the engine. If the engine doesn't start in three seconds, depress the accelerator pedal to one quarter throttle and turn the key again. If the engine still doesn't start, it may be flooded. Wait about 15 seconds for the starter to cool, then depress the gas pedal to the floor and hold it there while cranking the engine for a maximum of 12 seconds. This should clear the engine if it's flooded. As a special note, don't crank the engine for more than 15 seconds at a time. And be sure to wait 15 seconds before trying again. This will help prevent damage to the starter. Section 2 of the owner's manual offers detailed information on starting while Section 6 offers additional information on fuel, oil, and fluid capacities. The headlights and taillights are operated by pushing the switches to the left of the instrument cluster. High and low beams of the headlights are controlled by pulling the turn signal lever towards you until it clicks, then releasing it. The turn signal lever also controls the operation of the windshield wipers and washers. The delay wipers allow you to vary the time interval between wiper sweeps for as long as 16 seconds. Once the wipers are on, turning the delay control band away from you controls the amount of wiper delay. The closer the wiper control band is to the low position, the more often the wipers will move. The low and high positions provide continuous wiper action, while pushing the paddle on the turn signal lever engages the windshield washers. For continual washing, you must push and hold the paddle down. When you release the paddle, the washers will stop. For a single wiping cycle, turn the wiper band towards you to mist, then release the band. The dial to the right of the light switches controls the intensity of the instrument panel lights when the parking lights or headlights are illuminated. Rotate the dial upward to brighten the instrument panel lights, and rotating the dial fully upward will turn the interior lights on. The emergency or hazard warning flashers are controlled by a button underneath the ignition switch. To turn the flashers on, push the button in. To shut them off, pull out on the collar surrounding the button. Refer to section 2 in the owner's manual for additional information on lighting features and controls. Section 6 shows a photograph of fuse locations. The 5-speed manual transmission with overdrive and the 4-speed automatic overdrive transmission are designed to make your driving as easy as possible. If your truck is equipped with a manual transmission, read Section 2 of the Owner's Manual for tips on the operation of your transmission and clutch. 
Generally speaking, you should use the overdrive position above 40 miles per hour for maximum fuel economy. As an added benefit, some trucks equipped with manual transmissions feature a computerized shift indicator light in the instrument cluster. This light will inform you when to upshift for the best fuel economy. If your truck is equipped with an automatic transmission, the circle D overdrive position allows the transmission to automatically choose the appropriate gear for load and driving conditions and should be used in most driving situations. The D drive position should be used for increased performance when towing a trailer or driving on hilly roads if you notice excessive shifting between gears. The D drive position should also be used on slippery surfaces to avoid an unexpected downshift. When road conditions improve, shift back to the circle D overdrive position. You'll find that the second gear position provides additional power for hill climbing or engine braking. In addition, when the gear selector lever is placed in the second gear position, your S10 will start in second gear. This second gear start will limit the torque to the drive wheels for better use of available traction on slippery surfaces. The first gear position is for maximum engine braking at low speeds, like when you're driving or towing a trailer down a steep hill. It also helps provide maximum engine torque when driving through deep snow or mud. When you leave your truck, place the manual transmission in reverse or the automatic transmission in park and make sure that you set the parking brake. This brake is located under the lower left side of the instrument panel. To disengage the parking brake, use the release immediately above it on the instrument panel. As a special note, if you have the four-wheel drive system, never leave the transfer case in the neutral position when parked, since the vehicle could still roll even though the automatic transmission is in park or the manual transmission is in gear. Section 4 of the owner's manual offers additional information on parking and leaving your vehicle. In the event that you want to tow your S10 behind another vehicle, be sure to see Section 4 of the Owner's Manual for the correct towing procedures. And be aware that if your S10 is equipped with four-wheel drive and the optional electronic shift transfer case, we do not recommend towing it behind another vehicle because you can damage the drivetrain. S10s without air conditioning are equipped with easily operated ventilation and heating controls. This system uses a fan switch and two rotary switches. The fan switch controls the volume of air that flows into the interior. Rotating the switch upward increases airflow, while moving it downward decreases airflow. The upper rotary switch allows you to adjust the temperature of the air flowing into the interior. The lower rotary switch allows you to select any of the modes indicated to the outside of the switch. Four modes exist, defrost, heater, vent, and blend. The defrost mode directs most of the air to the upper defrost outlets. The heater mode directs the majority of the air to the lower heater outlets for maximum heating. The vent mode directs outside or outside heated air through the instrument panel outlets. Using this position is helpful for defogging your side windows. The two blend modes control your choice of a combination of two air outlets. You can direct the airflow through the defrost and instrument panel outlets or the instrument panel and lower heater outlets, depending on which blend mode you select. If your S10 is equipped with air conditioning, you'll find additional operating instructions for this system in part two of this program. That'll be for the next video, part two. Your electronically tuned AM or AM FM stereo radio has some very convenient functions. Part two is like known as side two actually though. And bass and treble adjustments. On the AM FM stereo, the seek button allows you to seek out the next available station. The scan button allows you to briefly sample all of the radio stations available. If while scanning you find a station you enjoy, quickly tap the scan button again to lock that station in. To preset AM and FM radio stations, first find a favorite station by using the tuning knob or seek and scan controls. To lock in that station, press the set button and within 5 seconds one of the numbered buttons. If you wish to preset more than four AM or FM stations, you can combine the numbered buttons. So, if you push two adjacent buttons simultaneously, such as buttons one and two, two and three, or three and four, you'll preset another station for a grand total of seven maximum. To set your electronic clock, you must use the set, seek, and scan buttons with the AM and FM stereo radio. 
or the set hour and minute buttons with the AM radio. When you push the set button, a set indicator light will illuminate. Within five seconds, press the scan or hour button to set the correct hour. By pressing the set button again within five seconds, you can use the seek or minute button to set the minutes. As a special note, be sure to secure all cargo prior to driving. Cargo weight should be distributed over the rear axle and centered to maintain the correct center of gravity. If you need to have your pickup towed, see section 5 in the owner's manual. When it comes to maintenance of your new S10, you need to keep in mind that different driving situations require differently scheduled service intervals. For example, if the majority of your driving is on the highway, where the engine is running at normal operating temperature and there's minimal stop-and-go driving, you can follow maintenance schedule 2 in your owner's manual. On the other hand, if you frequently use your S10 for short trips, towing a trailer, driving in cold or dusty conditions, or do a lot of stop-and-go driving, you'll need to follow maintenance schedule 1. Both of these schedules are found in section 7 of your owner's manual. And while we're on the subject of maintenance, you need to know that it's a good idea to check the engine oil level every time you put fuel in your S10, preferably when the oil is warm. For more detailed information on checking your oil, using the correct weight or viscosity of oil, inspecting the coolant, washer and transmission fluid levels, along with other self-maintenance procedures, read sections 6 and 7 in the owner's manual. To help fight spills and stains, the cloth fabric on the seats, door trim, and the carpeting in your new S10 have been treated with Scotchgard fabric protector. So a quick wipe with a damp sponge or cloth will clean most spills. For detailed information on stain cleaning procedures, refer to section 6 in your owner's manual. Your full-size spare tire is stowed underneath the vehicle. Every so often, be sure to check the pressure in it. The jack is located at the rear of the cab and is hidden with a molded plastic cover. Be sure to read section 5 of the owner's manual for the operation of your jack and for the correct procedures to remove or replace a tire. Your vehicle has many other standard features designed to make driving a delightful experience. So take some time to explore the interior and exterior of your new S10. The literature found in the exclusive Chevy S10 portfolio contains important information such as your owner's manual and vehicle warranty information. It also includes tire warranty information and convenience slots for business cards with the names of key contacts at your Chevrolet dealership. If you have any additional questions after reviewing the literature, please call our toll-free customer assistance center at 1-800-222-1020. In addition, your vehicle is covered by Chevrolet's 24-hour roadside service by calling 1-800-243-8872, which is the same as 1-800-CHEV-USA. These toll-free phone numbers can be found in Section 8 of your owner's manual. If you call these numbers, you'll have access to emergency services like towing, tire changing, locksmith services, and more for as long as you own your S10. We would like to remind you that in part two of this program, you'll find additional information and operational tips about the special options you may have purchased to customize your new S10. It also includes information on the use of child restraint devices. Yeah, I know my head's in the video, but I just need to get in there to check about the cassette. I had to shine my flashlight onto the player, just so I could see the tape better. I'm not lying, folks. So, yep. Yeah. That's going to do it for side one of this tape. So, uh, um, side two is going to be in the next video, but I'll do side two later. Because if you'll excuse me, I've got a Hangouts message to check on. So, um, but also there is one thing to say before I go. Do any of you remember Scotch Guard? You know that, I can't remember what it was called, like, Protector? What's the second word supposed to be? I can't remember. But, you know, uh, you can use Scotch Guard to wipe. Like, that's pretty interesting. So, uh, probably for your car or truck. So, that's interesting. So anyway, viewers, um, 
like I said, the next video will have side two, so, uh, but I'll, I'll work on side two later, so, that's just a quick reminder, viewers. So, anyway, viewers, I'll see you guys later for, for the video on side two of the 1994 Chevrolet Chevy Trucks S10 pickup tape. So, um, I almost forgot to tell you that, um, when you, I know I have the 1995 Chevrolet S10 pickup tape, but it's actually known as S-Series pickup, not S10 pickup. But, yeah, I did a video on that S-Series pickup cassette back last year. If you want to, if you want to watch it, watch both sides of the, watch, watch both the videos, like, watch both side one and side two. So, uh, you'll be very pleased about it. So, I will see you later for side two of the 1994 Chevrolet Chevy Trucks S10 pickup body cassette. This is Colton Tackett on Sonic Boom Fan 101 signing off. Have a great time and I'll see you later. Peace out.